This cabin has been here since the 1890s, and they believe that it's haunted by the former owner. And what is the cabin number of this one, Ryan? The Haunted Cottage Number 13. Was it you that closed the door to the bathroom there a little bit ago? What was that? Oh, wow. REM pod, REM pod, REM pod, holy shit. Hello? They turned it into a, an accommodation cottage for people to come and stay. Are you upset about that? And it just went off. Wow. It's not very often we get activity the moment that we step inside, but that's what happened here. Ooh, I feel like there's something to my left side. Like I felt like something brush up against my hand. That was creepy. Is that you standing in front of Dave? That's the first time that the paranormal music box has gone off tonight. Sounded like a child's voice said lights. All right, Ryan, here we are. We're in rural Ohio at the Macbeth Cottage here at Landall's Mohican Castle. Yeah, this place has a very interesting story. Now, this cabin has been here since the 1890s, and they believe that it's haunted by the former owner who is upset with renovations that were made when it was actually renovated to be a cottage for the hotel called Landall's Mohegan Castle, which is supposedly haunted in its own right. Yes. but. They believe that that former owner was upset by those renovations, and that makes this the most haunted building on the site of the entire Landol's Mohegan Castle Hotel. And uh, I will say we already had an interesting experience earlier. Well, I did. I was using the restroom in there, and we came outside to do a few things. And when I went back in, the bathroom door had been closed on its own. Now, I will say I was in the bathroom came out and I did not close that door like that. So I'm gonna have to tell Ryan about that when I go outside. That's a bit odd. Here's the restroom. You can see that door does not close by itself even. That is strange, okay. And you didn't shut the door at all after you came out of the bathroom? No. It would make no sense for me to go to the restroom and close the door behind me on the way out. Right. And when you went back in there, it was closed. It was closed, yep. So before we go into the cottage here, we're gonna do a, a daytime session of investigating because they say that the paranormal activity can happen at any time. We're gonna be staying here tonight to see if that former owner that said to haunt this cabin or any of the other spirits of this castle or land will come out and speak to us while we're investigating here tonight. Oh yeah, and another thing that's working in our favor is previously on the channel, we've investigated a haunted cabin 13. And what is the cabin number of this one, Ryan? This is called the Macbeth Cottage, and it is the haunted cottage number 13. That's right. Maybe we'll get just as lucky tonight with this one. Yeah, you talk about weird synchronicities and some strange coincidences. One of the most haunted cabins that we've ever investigated was called Cabin 13, and now here we are at Cottage 13. Oh yeah. Let's go inside and do a little investigating in here during the daytime when the sun is still out, see what happens, and then we'll come back after dark and see if we can capture anything on camera tonight. Let's do it, let's get inside. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so if there's a later this evening. <laughs> oh, that's kind of <laughs> weird. That's creepy. Yes, we will be back later this evening to talk to you and speak to you. If this is the former owner of this cottage, my friend, my name is Ryan and this is Dave. We don't know your name, but we would love to. 
And we want to know your thoughts on your home and what happened to it. A lot of people believe you're upset. What was that? Oh, wow. REM pod. REM pod, REM pod. Holy sh Hello? Already? We haven't even been inside here for a minute. No. And I, I did unplug the TV just so we all know. Yeah, the TV's not plugged in. Sir, if that's you, if that's you, can you light it all the way up again for us? Whoa. That's all the way. Yeah. Wow. We will be back later this evening. We're here now, but we're going to go up and eat dinner here in a little bit. And we're going to be back later this evening to talk to you. I do have a question for you. Was it you that closed the door to the bathroom there a little bit ago? If it was you, could you try and close that again? Can you push it closed right now? These are brand new batteries and everything, you guys. Brand new batteries. What was that? What did you hear? It sounded like jingling change. You didn't hear that? No. Push that door, push that door shut for us, please. Sir, was that you that pushed the door shut when Dave got done in the restroom earlier? He said he didn't shut that door, but when he came back in here after being outside for a couple of minutes, the door was shut. Noah. 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 Is your name Noah? We don't know what his name was at all. No. So, I mean, it could be that his name is. Inside. Inside. And notice how the REM pod is stopped now. Is it okay if we come back into the bedroom and come back towards the bathroom? If you prefer that door to be shut, sir, you can shut it. If your name is Noah. Let's walk back towards the bathroom here. All right, sir, we're going to come into the, the bedroom area here. Just like that one that's behind Dave that you were touching, there's one here on the bed that does the same thing. Is there any way that you could touch that one for us? Or if you don't want it on the bed, you can push it off of there. That was so weird, man. It's creepy. Now it's just silent. Yeah. As soon as we walk in here, it said later this evening, Noah, the REM pod was going nuts. <laughs> like as soon as we walked in here, it's not very often that we get activity in places the moment that we step inside, but that's what happened here. As soon as we stepped inside this place, it just started to go crazy. Yeah, that was... A little unexpected. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is a, a gentleman still here. Somebody's still here because that was going off. Yeah. Sir, are you happy with the fact that they turned your home, your old, your old cottage, your old house, they turned it into a, an accommodation cottage for people to come and stay and that there's new people in your home every single night? Are you upset about that? It's also reported that the microwave comes on by itself in here. Is that you that does that? That right there in the corner, that's a microwave, in case you don't know. The housekeeper said that they've been in here and the microwave is just turned on by itself. That the lights turn on and off. 
unexplainably, that the water has turned on. Have we met? We have not met before. What is your name? My name is Dave and this is Ryan over here. We don't mean any disrespect. You wanna walk into this room? Yeah, let's walk back into the bedroom. If you want us to come back out of the bedroom when we're in here, you know how to do it. Now this was the door, right, Dave? Yeah, that is the door that was closed. You came in here after knowing that you came out of the out of the restroom here, out of the toilet, out of the bathroom, knowing that you'd left the door open and when you came back in, the door is shut and like you did before. So, when we got here earlier, this was already open and this has been open the whole time. And yes, these things are on here, but it's not like if I push that, now what if you pull it shut just a little bit? Like you didn't close it all the way. Now open it up ha about halfway from that, about 45 more degrees. And, and even then, hold I on, stay there. Leave it like that. I'm gonna open the front door and see if there's any suction okay. to cause it to close. So let's say you had it, you didn't open it all the way, you were getting ready to leave, and you came outside. I mean, it wiggles just a little bit, but it doesn't move. It didn't close? Uh-uh. Uh-oh, hold on. What? Clipped? This RP is dead now. Dead? Yeah. It says change battery pack. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. So it did die. That's interesting. I wonder if it stole the energy from that or something. It could have. Did you, did you charge, did you drain the battery? Cause that hasn't been on that long. Look. It was maybe what, like a 15 minute clip? Yeah. And now the REM pod that has been silent for a while starts to go off again. That's very cool. Thank you for doing that for us. That's why we're here to try and communicate with you to see if you still can communicate with us. What was that? I don't know. I thought I just heard like moaning. Oh, I didn't hear that. It was like back here. Let me walk out and see if there's... Whoa. What is going on here? I don't know. Whoa. Is there anyone outside that could possibly have like a radio? I don't, th wouldn't think so. This is, it's pretty secluded out here and it's but, a hotel. But why isn't this one in here going off? Right. If it was a RF radio frequency, it'd set that one off too. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. We're not upset that you are doing that. It's just very, it's, it's what we want you to do, so. Did you drain the batteries from that thing that's over there in the corner? I don't hear any kids out there. Me neither. I'm gonna go grab a battery here for that camera just so we can switch it out and get it rolling again. I'm gonna leave this rolling here on the REM pod. Maybe while I'm out there, go back that, there towards the bathroom and see if you can get him to shut the door again. Yeah. I'll be right back in a minute once I get this battery. And notice also, also the ghost tube has not said anything either. And the mail meter that's on this bed has not gone off. I'm feeling really cold air right here on my... 
I feel really cold air right here. Is that you? Are you standing by me? If you are, can you make our light go off again? <gasps> and it just went off. Wow. Dude. What? The craziest thing just happened. What? I was standing right here just like this, and I felt this intense cold air come down my arm here. And I said, if that's you making my arm cold like that or standing here by me, make that go off again. And it went off. Wow. Dude, let me get this battery in here. I brought two just in case it happens again. Okay, so you can communicate, you, you can intelligently communicate with us. So if that was you that closed the door that's directly behind me right now. Wow. Okay. Thank you. So could you close the door again for me right now so I can see that? <gasps> what happened? I heard something behind me like it. I don't know. Go on. Can you close that door right there? I'm pointing at it. Command. <gasps> What'd it say? Command. Wow. Okay. That's on. We're rolling yeah, again. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really commanding you. I'm just asking you if you could please do it. You don't have to, but I just thought it was very interesting that it was closed before. Thank you. We're going to go back by the bathroom here. Can you follow us back here? Fight. Fight? Bite. Bite? So that is already two very, three actually, if you count the REM pod and your experience with that cold energy coming over you. That is multiple very interesting experiences already. And we've only been in this cabin but like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. We haven't even started our investigation tonight. So I'm excited to see what happens when the sun goes down and we're alone in this place, exactly what is going to happen. What type of paranormal experiences are we gonna have? This place has multiple reports of paranormal activity and in the last 15 to 20 to 30 minutes, we've already proven that that is true. I'm excited to set up these cameras and to do an abandonment session in this cabin to see exactly what's gonna happen. And then later come back and find out exactly what could or is haunting the Macbeth Cottage number 13 here at Landall's Mohegan Castle. Are you ready, Dave? I am ready, but I, 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 I think the spirits here are more ready than we are, apparently. Again? again? <laughs> yeah, we'll be back again. We're just gonna go grab some stuff that we can set up here for you. Stuff that you can touch and move and talk to us through. Things that you can use to tell your story. Because that's really why we're here. We're here to find out who you were, what your connection to this cottage is, and to be able to tell other people exactly what it is that will make you happy. What was that? Did something just move beside you? Something right here on this shelf. Whoa. Dude. Now this one just went off. Yeah. Let what? me check and make sure that was not me. Well, thank you very much for, for doing that. We will be back with all of our equipment. Just give us a little bit of time to set it up and we'll be back. All right, so 
We have night vision on right now, but that's only because we shut all the windows in the cabin, whatever windows that we didn't, we weren't able to get closed. We put a pillow up against the window. So um, yeah, we tried to make it as dark in here as we possibly could. So it is gonna be dark here. Sunset is gonna be here in about two hours or so from what I can tell. So we're gonna leave this abandonment set up here right now though, because we can't miss out on anything that happens because we just had a few minutes ago some amazing activity in here moments after we stepped into this cabin. So we have a camera here in the main dining room pointing into the living room. Behind me here is the microwave that housekeeping says will randomly just start running on its own with no explanation. We have the REM pod set up in the same spot all the way across the room there behind Dave. Inside that room, we have a camera rolling into the bedroom and on that bathroom door that Dave said closed on its own. We also have a mel meter on the bed and we're gonna have a thermal imaging camera pointing back into that room. So if any temperature anomalies occur, we're gonna be able to know about it. We're gonna have this whole cabin also wired with motion sensors as well, so we're not gonna miss anything. We're gonna leave for about an hour and come back, see what these cameras picked up. You ready, Dave? I am ready. Before you turn that on, you wanna give them one? Oh yeah, I sure do. Can't forget about that. Remember guys, brand new merch over on our merch site, paranormalquestmerch.com. Dave's gonna tell you why you need to buy the We're Leaving merch. Yes, so you want to make sure that you have your We're Leaving merch because, because why? Because We're Leaving is a, an important part of this show because when we begin abandonment, we have to let the cameras know that we're leaving. Yeah, guys. Go grab you some We're Leaving merch. Make sure you hit the like button on this. Let's get it to 6,500 thumbs up. And uh, I just have one last thing to say. What's that, Dave? We're leaving! <laughs> We're leaving! He needs a lozenge. Let's get out of here. Unlock keys. All I have is my keys, because my phone's running the thermal. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Now that the cottage is empty, it seems eerily quiet. You'd never know that just 15 minutes ago, the REM pod was alarming on command. In fact, the only piece of equipment to trigger at all was the EDI plus meter, which detected a change in temperature and a change in air pressure. But after that, nearly 40 minutes passes before something truly bizarre happens. Listen carefully, and know that Dave and I are still at the restaurant. It sounds like someone is trying to open the front door of the cottage. You can't hear any cars pull up, and no car doors close, but without warning, footsteps can be heard on the porch, and the door handle can be heard rattling. In this situation, we actually pray that this is paranormal, because the alternative is much more chilling. Either we just captured the phantom sounds of a ghost on the porch, 
or a living person was just trying to enter the cottage while we were gone. But something else about this footage baffles us. The first noise that's heard on the footage is the doorknob rattling. You can't hear anyone approaching. But also, listen to the ticking of the clock on the wall. Its rhythmic sound hasn't faltered for the 70 minutes preceding this encounter. And then, in that split second before the doorknob begins to rattle, it's almost as though the speed of time changes. Listen closely to the clock. Is this just a bizarre coincidence that coincided with an unexpected visitor? Or did the speed of time just change right before this paranormal experience? Tell us what you think in the comments below. From what we understand, we don't know that hasn't really gone off. Decompose clear. Decompose clear? Rolling. Along the rose line, huh? It should stop here soon. Pillow. Pillow. Moan. Oh! <laughs> Pillow moan, huh? <laughs> this is a popular spot for couples to have romantic getaways and it says pillow moan. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a little too on the nose there. Right. Let's say quite. Still quite average thin still. <laughs> this is Listen, man, he's not even in bed yet. Don't talk about being average. <laughs> if at any point that gets on your nerves. If it keeps going like that, I'll probably turn it off. Okay. If it shuts up. So, we are gonna start out the night with an Estes Method spirit box session. We just got back from abandonment, and of course we don't know what happened while we were gone, although you guys at home already know what happened, so. Yeah, we're just kind of starting the investigation. The only information we have is that we were having some very relevant REM pod responses earlier, as well as some very interesting personal experiences ourselves. So we'll see. Dave's going to be out here in the dining room, living room area. I'm going to be sitting here in the bedroom listening to the spirit box. Now, Dave's not going to be able to hear the spirit box. Only I am, but I'm not going to be able to hear his questions or see what he's doing because I'm going to have a blindfold on and I'm gonna call out what I hear through the spirit box and hopefully it's relevant to his questions. And as always, we are going to record the spirit box audio so that when we give you this video, this documentary, we can play it for you. Bush. <laughs> What's say? Bush. 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 Huh. We are going- <laughs> Okay. Did it just say bush wood? It said bush wood bottom. <laughs> Oh god, Ovilus is giving us a run for our money right now. I'm not sure if it's the Ovilus itself, or the romantic nature of this cabin, but it's said more suggestive words here than any other investigation that we've used it on, and that's part of the reason why we didn't leave it set up on the abandonment. We might not want to leave the Ovilus for this. 
<laughs> Man meat surprise. Man meat surprise. <laughs> the frequency at which the device is throwing out words is also a problem. It can be disruptive, and on this Estes session, if it keeps talking every five seconds, Dave will have to shut it off. But anyway, as always, we're going to be recording the Spirit Box audio for you to hear as well, so that whenever I hear the words, you can as well. Not only are you gonna know that I'm not making it up, but also you're gonna be able to hear the responses as well. And of course, they'll be displayed on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, blindfold on now and then put the headphones on. It sounded like those chairs just moved over there. Energy. Okay. I am sweeping. All right. Can you hear me? Is this too loud? Can you hear me, Ryan? All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. For any of the spirits... Why do you want me to stop? Once again. Once again. All right, to any of the spirits that are here in this cabin, in this cottage, my name is Dave. In the other room there, that is Ryan. That is Ryan. And we're going, I'm going to be asking you some questions. And you're going to be able to answer me through the radio that Ryan has. Do you understand that? Distant man's voice kind of sounded like they might. So first of all, I'd like to ask you, are you able to tell? Now. Yeah, we're getting started now. I'd like for you to tell Ryan, if you can, if you can tell him what your name is. Can you tell him that? Kind of sounded like prison. Can you please go into that room and use that radio to tell Ryan what your name is? I would love to know what your name is. Face. I'm out here. Where? Where is out here? Are you out on the front porch? Is that what you mean? Remember, in this moment, Dave and I have no idea what our cameras captured on abandonment. Knowing now that our cameras captured the sound of someone on the front porch trying to open the front door makes this response and Dave's assumption of its meaning much more chilling. I'm out here. Are you out on the front porch? Is that what you mean? You can use any of these devices here. I know earlier you were using this one, like that. This one does the same thing. So all you have to do is try and use those to communicate with us. It lets us know that you're here. Along with the radio. That was a man's voice, couldn't really make it out. Sounded like I heard the word chain in that sentence though. Along with the radio that Ryan has, you can use all of these things to try and communicate with us. So again, can you tell him what my name is? Do you remember? Do you remember what my name is? I'm going to turn the ovulus off. It's just incessantly going, so sometimes that happens. All right, I've turned that device off. You're no longer able to use that one. So if we you, don't want. You don't want what? Do you not want us to be in here? Are you upset that <gasps> Whoa. Thank you very much for doing that. Can you try this one right here? You were doing it earlier. But really, if you can, I'd love for you to use the radio that my friend Ryan has to say words to us. 
Ooh, I feel like there's something to my left side. Like I felt like something brush up against my hand. That was creepy. And right before that happened, I thought I heard a man say, I like him or I like that. The mail went off right when he said that. Are you standing beside Ryan? Did you touch his hand? If you're standing beside my friend in there, can you try touching him again? But somehow- I did hear something there, but- Oh, wow. It sounded like it said, get out or something like that, male voice. Why do you want us to get out? And I think the voice beforehand might have said mine, but it was the same voice. Who is this person that's coming through talking to Ryan? What is your name? Tell us, please. His problem. His problem. Did you close the door in the other room there earlier? EDI just went off. Mel just went off. Make this one go off, please. Can you make this one go off? Right here. What if I count down for you? Three, two, one, go. EDI went off. Now right in here, I'm pointing at it. I'm pointing at a door. I'm pointing at it. Can you close that door like you did earlier? Hi, get away, or I get away? Well, we're not gonna be going anywhere. We're sleeping here tonight. How do you feel about that? We're gonna be sleeping here tonight. The EDI is going crazy over there. I was just about to say I have a very strong feeling something's about to happen. And the millimeter went off. You're in this room, aren't you? Man. Who is there? I already told you my name is Dave. And that is Ryan in there. Who are you? I don't know if I've ever seen the EDI ever be that active before. That's me? Is that you making that device go off like that? Is that what you're saying? If it is, if that's what you're saying, make this one go off. I'm pointing at it. Whoa. If that's you making that go off, can you just push that over? I won't be upset if you push it over. I'm asking you to. Go ahead, push it over. All you have to do is barely touch that thing and it'll, it'll fall over. I thought I heard a very, very faint man's voice say, I like that thing. If you're talking about that thing that you like, show me how much you like that thing and push it over. And you'll notice how the EDI has completely stopped. It sounded like a child's voice that time, but it sounded like a child's voice said, lights? Or light? Are you a kid? If you're a kid, can you try and make all the lights on that thing light up? And you can do that just by touching that thing. All the lights will turn on. Isn't it cool how you can talk to Ryan and he can hear you? Isn't that fascinating? 
If you think that's fascinating, can you try and grab that light? Yeah, see how there's more lights the more that you interact with it? See? Wow, thank you. It sounded like a very elderly man's voice said, I'm done. Okay, just, just so I know, can you oh step gosh. away and stop making the light go off so I know it's you? Oh wow, something's going off, huh? Yeah, man, this has been wild. But what's interesting yeah. is that the EDI was the most active I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. And then I believe I asked if it could stop that and try this one. And it came to here? Yeah, and the EDI hasn't gone off since. Thank you for that. Do you like these lights better than you like to talk through this box that I have? Because... I mean, this is just wild, you guys. You seemed to talk to me a little bit in the beginning, but as I kept going, the voices were very, very quiet. I could barely even hear you. So I'm guessing you didn't like that, did you? You good? Yes. What if over here, you came to this orange light right here and tried to talk to us? There's an orange light right over here, and it may pick up your voice. So Dave is rolling on the SLS camera here. We are officially getting ready to sweep the cabin with the structured light sensor camera. And the way this works is it actually projects infrared lasers or structure lights out the front of it, which are then used to determine shapes. So as you can see on screen there, Dave can see the shape of the TV, he can see the shape of the couch, he can see the shape of the table but when it detects something that's shaped like a human, it maps it with a human stick figure. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna begin the SLS sweep, like Ryan said, and we have Ghost Tube Vox running. I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, if there are any spirits here in the Macbeth cabin, like we told you earlier, we wanna take your picture. So all you have to do is stand in front of me and this device here, and it's gonna take your picture. So if you'd like to get your picture taken, now's the time. There's also a box in my hand that if you walk... <laughs> Sorry, I was speaking. I didn't quite catch that. There's a box in my hand that you can use to speak through. We think you can, at least. And we'd love it if you can speak to us. And I'm working with it. I'm working something or other. Working with something like that. If you would speak to us through this. So see, you can see how it's mapping Ryan there. I'm here too. Did you hear that? I did. If you're Ooh. still here. I feel like there's something, like I feel static behind me right here. And it just got really cold over here by me. That was a laugh. Are you over there by Ryan? That's Ryan over there. Can you 
Show us you're here by touching the lights that you've liked to use. There's one right here on the counter, but then I also put one on the sink back in the bathroom. Okay, you wanna sweep back into the bedroom? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Leave. Leave. Wow, same voice too, dude. Yeah. Hello and leave. If you want us to leave, you're gonna to need to touch one of these devices that we have with the red light on it. If you would like for us to leave, that's one way to let us know. That's me. Who was it that closed this door earlier when we first got here? What is your name? Oh. Whoa. Right on the door. Right on that door. Are you, is it mapping the bathrobe, you think? Do we see you? Can you push that door closed? It may be mapping the bathrobes. Can you see us? We want to speak to the you owner. Have. You have? You have? We want to speak to the owner of this cabin. So he can tell us what he thinks of all the renovations and changes that they've done to his home. Can you tell me what you think of what they've done to your house? To your beautiful cottage? We're really hoping somebody could close that door there. Remember this thing here? How come you stopped? Don't what is that? Don't forget. Remember that thing? How come you stopped using that? Can you try it again for us? In the stone outside, we noticed that it said Pettit 1949. Who is Pettit? Whoa. You got something in front of you? Like directly in front of me here? In the shower. Is that you? <laughs> is that you standing in front of Dave? I'm trying to take your picture, so if that's you, come over and touch those orange lights again. <laughs> Ew. That was a weird voice. Yeah. That's gone. <laughs> the face you made there. Question. What's your question? Come on, stand in front of me here. I'd like to take your picture. If you've never had your picture taken, now's your chance. This is a camera. Ask him. That's him, or ask him? Ask him, I thought I heard. Isn't it weird though? how active the REM pod and Melmeter have been tonight and on this session, absolutely nothing. Yeah. With everything in the cottage quieting down, we decide to go to the 230 year old private cemetery that sits just beside the pool house of the hotel. Many guests to the castle 
have seen what they believe to be spirits wandering amongst the tombstones at all hours of the day and night. Could it be that these ghosts travel between the buildings, causing staff and guests to have paranormal experiences? All right, Ryan, we've made a bit of a diversion. Why are we outside? So while we were sitting in there thinking about what we were gonna do next, how we could switch it up, we actually decided that we were going to investigate something that's here on the grounds of the Land All Mohegan Castle. And not only do you have this beautiful castle that was built in 2002 and some beautiful accommodations, cottages, cabins, but up on top of the hill, you have a 230 year old cemetery called Hyde Cemetery. And they believe that some of the paranormal activity on property here may stem from some of the people that are buried in this cemetery. So we thought, you know, let's do a session up here at this cemetery as well to see what happens. We have some equipment. We have the thermal imaging camera rolling right here on top of my angle. So if anything moves across the cemetery outside here, we'll see its temperature signal. Oh yeah. So let's walk out here and set up some equipment. Let's do it. I think we're all set up. We got a spread right here across. It is quite a small little cemetery. It is, yeah. But 230 years old, they were private back then. Most of the time you had to be family or friends. So. And we're also gonna be running on ghost tube here. Rolling, this is the Hyde Cemetery at the Land Al Mohegan Castle. Ghost tube, sink, pop. You hear that music? Can you stand in front of that? Whoa, whoa. Stand directly in front of it for us. Can you play that music so we can hear it? You just gotta stand there. Granddaughter. That's right. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. That's the first time that the paranormal music box has gone off tonight. Just real quick, I just wanna make sure that does- Can you hear me? We can hear you. Mary E, wife of Jacob Hyde. Hyde, born December 8th, 1800, died 1886, age of 85, wow. That's pretty interesting. Mary, are you the woman in white that people see? Wow. Mary, if that's you. There's a couple of Bright red lights on the ground, it looks like fire. Can you try touching one of those? Wow. Increasing in frequency now. Yeah. Mary, can you step back away from that for a second just so we know that it's you? And like move away from it for at least five or 10 seconds so we... I know you like the pretty music, but we are trying to figure out if it's actually you making that go off or if it's something else. How are you? Good, kind of tired. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing well, thank you. We're, we're good, how are you? Mary, we've traveled a long way to speak with you. Or anyone else who's out here in the cemetery, we heard that there's a lot of people from the Hyde family. It's kind of spooky up here. It is, it's, it's very eerily quiet. If there's anybody in this cemetery with us, 
you can use this device in my hand. I know none of you probably know what it is because we're kind of from the future, but you can use this to talk to us. And we're gonna walk around and give everybody a chance. Whoa, I knew it, dude, I knew it. No way. Thank you. Literally as soon as we walk away. I had a feeling, man, I had a feeling. Thank you for doing that, could you try it again? Did you hear that? Yes. It sounded like a female. Yeah, it sounded like a... It sounded like it went, who? Yeah. But not like an owl. Right. No, it wasn't an owl. Uh -uh. Mary, is that you? It's so creepy looking back into those trees. I'm just waiting for something to move back there <laughs> on the fleer. I hope it does. Sorry, we don't mean to be rude. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves. My name is Dave. And my name's Ryan. It doesn't feel Be quiet. <gasps> Sorry, are you trying to rest? If you're upset that we're in Below. Your... Below. Below. You asked, are you trying to rest? And it said below. Yeah. When we're standing right beside where they are below us. Right. I guess I am standing on your... Sorry about that. It's dark and we can't see. But if you're upset that we're here and you'd like for us to go, let us know somehow. Do you get many visitors up here? Well, we'll go ahead and leave and be quiet for you. Isn't it weird also how that mel meter went off and it hasn't gone off since and the paranormal music box hasn't gone off since? Right, okay. Ooh, maybe we should bring something down here. This seems like a... Is this a kid? I don't know. Lots of little toys. Sarah. Did we get the name Sarah? Why does that sound familiar? I don't know. Wife of Anthony... Carnegie. Carnegie. Now, there's a lot of gifts all over these tombstones, and one thing that we've seen throughout this cemetery most of the time are actual coins. And... That comes from Greek mythology because they believe the river Styx, they had to cross the river Styx when they passed away. And in order to get across the river Styx and into the afterlife, you needed coins to pay. I see you. I see you. <laughs> We'd like to see you. But they say you needed coins to pay the ferryman in order to get across the river Styx. Can you see our red lanterns there? Can you try touching them? Sarah, did you die during childbirth? My name is Ryan and this is Dave and we'd love to hear your story. We'd love for you to tell us about who you are and your life here. This is now a castle, a hotel, a resort. It's dark. What? They say it's far or it's hard. Do you like what they've done with this land? Do you like what they've done with your home?
That's enough to make your hair raise. Yeah, that's so freaking eerie. Yeah. I love those, though. Oh, yeah. In the words of Jason McKinney, though, if anything comes out of that tree line bigger than a loaf of bread... <laughs> I'm going to be up that tree. <laughs> I'm watching that tree line. Damn. Whatever comes out of there is bigger than a bread loaf, I'm going in that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us what happens after you pass away, after you die? Does our consciousness live on? Do we have some sort of energy st still, like a foot in this world? Leaving. <laughs> nice talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Start asking the hard questions and they leave. <laughs> It's gone very quiet, huh? It has, besides that that noise, but that could be. I mean, there are people. There's not many people staying here now because it is early in their season. Yeah. It's not like their peak busy season, So, but there are a couple of cabins that people are staying in besides us. So that could have been one of the other patrons that came outside talking, yelling, who knows. This has been a really cool little cemetery up here, but I think because of our battery life and because of how quiet it is right now, we had a little bit of equipment interaction, but all of that has really died off completely. Let's head back down to the cottage. Let's do it. Let's head back down. Well, Dave, I think this might be <laughs> the best way we've ever ended an investigation. The best or the weirdest. <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. I was forced into this. There's nothing wrong with just two bros in a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. And the romantic one bed suite. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh... This was an amazing night, an amazing investigation. We had a lot of fun from the moment we stepped into this cabin. There was creepy activity. Oh yeah. Yeah, there was. It, it, it's been a very cool yet unexpected investigation. Yeah, and when we heard about the Haunted Cottage 13 here at Landall's Mohegan Castle, we weren't sure what to expect. We weren't sure whether it was clever marketing or whether there was actually paranormal activity here in this cabin. And we left pleasantly surprised with what we experienced, what we captured, and the overall experience of being here. I mean, that cemetery, the Hyde Cemetery was very creepy. It was very creepy. Yeah, that was totally unexpected, being able to go up there and check that out. And uh, we even got some very minor activity up there, but it was cool nonetheless. Yeah, so I think now for the rest of the evening, let's just chill out. Let's enjoy this hot tub. <laughs> Not in that way. <laughs> let's enjoy this hot tub. Enjoy and relax a little bit because come tomorrow, we're off to another investigation. To yes. another incredible haunted location. To another place on our paranormal quest. That's right, everybody. The grind never stops, and there's about to be another one in this hot tub. <laughs> oh. So remember, everyone, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you are new to this channel, new to our quest, we'd love to have you along for the ride. Make sure you turn on that bell notifications button so that you never miss a video. If you enjoyed what you saw here and you liked this investigation, make sure you hit that like button and share the video with your friends and family because that helps more than you know. Just by hitting that like button, it helps this video and it helps the channel. Remember, we also have a Patreon page. You can become a member of the channel. And what else, Dave? We have brand new merch. We have brand new merch, ParanormalQuestMerch.com. Head over, check it out, shirts, hats. Yeah, we're leaving merch, Nova merch, Ryan and I is zombies merch. Even a candle, if you wanted to buy a candle to help set the mood for your spooky Saturdays with Paranormal Quest. I mean, you can't set the mood any more than this right here in a hot tub, but hell, That's right. <laughs> buy a candle, set the mood, get in the hot tub. Come on in. For the, the love of God. 
Please click the thumbs up button. We're in a hot tub, y'all. Come on. <laughs> the water's nice. Come on in. That's right. But we'll see you next time, guys, on this paranormal quest. Bye.